and welcome to another video. So today what I'm going to be doing is utilising the leftover chicken sarg and I'm going to be putting that into uh, some cabbage parcels with mozzarella, uh, semi-dried tomatoes, uh, chive, fresh chives as well. I'm going to make some mini uh, fondant potatoes. I'm going to be utilising the leftover potato as well. Uh, I'm going to be making um, turkey breast scallops uh, with a couscous crumb um, flavoured with oregano, um, carrot powder and ginger powder in there. I'm going to fry that with rapeseed oil and a bit of sesame, sesame seed oil for just a little bit of nuttiness. I'm also going to basically um, use uh, some tender stem broccoli and wrap that in parma ham as well. So I've got a lot to do today, so let's just uh, crack on. So first of all, I'm going to prep these uh, potatoes. Just put a rusty ring straight in there. And the reason why I've got two um, rolling pins is because one's for hammering the chicken, because this bit's indented in, so therefore I, I know which bit I'm hitting it with. And also this is a little bit of a harder wood um, rolling pin for hammering like this, okay? And once you've got the rusty ring down like that, then all you do is uh, basically chop that off. I'm gonna be utilizing this leftover potato, okay? So it doesn't really matter how, how it looks when it comes off, I'm gonna do something else with that, okay? Another bash, okay, and then ha hammer it that side, and as you can see there, and then that should just pop out without throwing it on the floor. <laughs> there we go. So that's basically a nice shape now. Um, just take the top off that and the bottom, okay. And that's your fondant potato. So that's one. I'm gonna put that in a the pan there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put, I've preheated the oven. I'm gonna put a knob of butter and a tiny bit of water in there. Season it with a, with a bit of pepper, and uh, just let that do its thing in, in the oven for about half an hour or so. Okay, let's just get this other one. Okay. Just so pushing the roster in. as far as uh, the top goes and then just chop off the excess hammer it to the other side as you can see quite slippery okay just give that a little wash if you spill any Fine. So that's just the scraps of potato, and this is uh, the lovely fondant again. There we go. So what I'm going to do is um, put the potato in a Tupperware because I don't want it going brown if you just leave it out. So that will be utilised tomorrow. dish, it's two knobs of butter, normally I would fry these first in butter, um, but I'm just thinking to save time, it doesn't really matter to be honest, because it's all going to soak up the flavour of the butter. Normally I would fry them in butter uh, and season it with a bit of pepper, just get a little bit of brownness on there, but I don't really have a lot of time today, so... This video, I just want to keep it to a minimum. Just grind some, I've got green peppercorns here. And just 
just whack that straight in the oven. And uh, it's probably going to be like a gas mark to 220. And I'm going to put that on there. I'll check it after. I'll probably uh, just baste it a little bit with the sauce after 20 minutes. Okay, that's cool. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to blanch the tender stem broccoli there. And I'm going to also blanch the cabbage leaves. So I've pre boiled the kettle. There we go. So in go the cabbage leaves. There we go. Try and get the tough bits of the stalk underneath the water. I might need a bit more water in there, so I'm just going to quickly boil the kettle. It's totally fine. And I'm just going to put the gas on anyway to give it a bit, a bit of heat. Okay, so what's next? Okay, let's move on to these uh, turkey scallops. What I'll do is um, the cling film, just over chopping board like so, just overlap it, use your knife on the edge of the chopping board like so, and then you've got like a sheet of cling film, okay, one turkey breast there in the middle, with your hands, Now what I'm going to do, do another sheet on top, just overlap it, that's it. So, so just sort of flatten the edges around the turkey. So you're just sealing it all in just in case a bit of juice flushes out. Okay, that's the kettle quickly boiled. Just going to top up these uh, greens. So, give it another little flatten down. I'm going to turn off the gas now and just let it, let it blanch in there. So then use the rolling pin. You don't want to go too mad, just methodically just uh, hammer it quite evenly okay and try and try and aim for the the thickest part first just to even out the, the thickness go this way lengthways Depends what shape you want it. I mean, this is these are quite big uh, turkey breasts, so it's going to be like a nice, nice scallop or schnitzel, as the Americans call it. Okay. Spread out the clean film a little bit more. I didn't really need to use that rolling pin in the end. I normally do use that rolling pin for um, hammering uh, for for this, but this is totally fine to be honest. Take off the cling film. I might just use some scissors. If I can try and utilize this, it might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, normally I'd use um, separate bits of cling film on there, but uh, I was just trying to utilize uh, the leftover. Oh, there we go. I can do it. Well, I'll try and do it. Just try and utilize this cling film. Every little helps, doesn't it? So let's just put that there, back like that. And then put this uh, turkey, lovely turkey breast, and swap it over with that. Okay. I'll wash my hands again. And then just fold that back over. That's it. And then round two. This is a slightly smaller press, won't need as much work. So it's a good idea if, you're, if you've got a bigger breast and then you want to utilise the cling film, start with the bigger one first because then you've got more space to play with. Obviously after you start, after you've uh, beaten up like the, the turkey breast, the cling film gets a bit creased so you haven't got much room to play with a bigger breast. So this way it's worked out perfectly, isn't it, with the smaller breast. Just enough space there to, to play with. So what I'm going to be doing is um, putting, dipping these in the flour, then dipping them in uh, some free whisked uh, egg, uh, one egg with a splash of milk, and then I'm going to basically uh, dip it in the couscous. turn over these um, cabbage just to make sure it's hitting the water's hitting all sides. I've got asbestos fingers, don't do that at home. Okay, that's totally fine. So um, now what I'm gonna do is um, the couscous, well it's welded to the bottom of the, of the pan. So just give it a little full, full cup and put that in there. Sure, how much I'd need. Start off with that. I'll utilize the rest of the couscous tomorrow. Okay. That's it. Just give it a little crumble with your hands. Might as well. Just get it a little bit finer because sometimes it clumps up, you know, after it's uh, soaked up all that water. That's, that's good. Wash my hands now, again. And what I was thinking, I'm just going to grate a bit of uh, lemon zest in there. Might be nice. A little bit of zing on the turkey or scallop. Yeah, it's a little bit of a longer video today because there's much more um, processes to, to do, but I just thought, you know, give you guys something a little bit more challenging to do, you know? And that's it. So that's fine, that's the lemon zest in there. In goes a little bit of uh, dried oregano. Okay. Carrot powder, like that. If it's clumpy, then just sort of like grind it up in your hand. That's it. That's fine. And then the ginger powder. That's it. A little bit of that. Okay. 
some pepper. Okay, and then just give it a little mix around with your hands. Like so. And that's a nice crisp, crisp crumb, isn't it? Normally people do use breadcrumbs, obviously, but I just thought I didn't have any breadcrumbs, so just thought couscous would be a nice for a nice change. So okay, so let's uh, do this. Put that there. So I've got the turkey scallop here. Then the egg. No couscous. Okay. Just sort of um, thoroughly coat it as well. Because some couscous will come off when it's in the pan, but by thoroughly like uh, coating it means that you create a thicker crust that way. And what I'd also like to do is, um, normally I'd like to weigh it down with something, uh, maybe like, uh, you know, put like uh, in some cling film or something, and then put like uh, like a heavy plate or something like that, or book or something over the plate, uh, and then that will really compress the couscous to the turkey. So just give it a little, you know, Give it a little compression, I would say. You don't, obviously, bits are going to fall off, that's inevitable. But if you can just create, you know, try and make sure every bit is like that, is all on, then that's all good, isn't it? So, I'm just going to get what I'm going to do, just put this turkey in there, and then this one. Let's go back to coating this. It's quite therapeutic, this, to be honest. Yeah. Well, it will be if it turns out nice, that is. So in goes into the egg. Don't worry about making a bit of a mess. That's all fine cleaned up later. That's the joyful part, isn't it, about cooking? Cleaning up. So, I might need a little bit more couscous from here, because I've got like, quite a thick crumb. That's totally fine. What I'm going to do, I've got plenty left, so I'm just going to rinse my hands. And then I'm going to add a little bit more couscous in there. It obviously won't be as seasoned. Well, actually, I'll season it again. I don't want to scrimp on you guys. Okay, so let's just uh, move that. Uh, wash my hands again because I've handled the turkey. Always remember that if you have if you handle meat, then just give it give your hands a little rinse. It only takes a second, you know. There's no need to be a little bit lazy on that. Okay, that's fine. We've still got plenty of couscous in there. Okay, just grate a little bit more lemon. Lucky I saved a little bit of that zest. Okay. A bit more oregano. Carrot powder. Ginger. just to speed up the process. Okay, and then we can go back in here. Because it just actually dipped in the flour. I'm gonna dip it in the egg again on that side. Okay. And that's just about enough actually. He's a man. 
massive has collapsed. in my hand. There you go. Look at that. That's cool. So, okay. I'm just going to let that rest for a minute there. And then um, I will fry that in the pan. So I'll do that after I wash my hands. So what I'm going to do, take out before I do that, just um, drain these veggies. That's totally fine. So the veggies are all done now. I'm just going to let them cool down in there. That's nice. Okay, so in goes the rapeseed oil in the pan. Quite a bit because you don't want that sticking, okay? And then a little bit of sesame seed oil, just for the nuttiness, give it a little whiz round. We'll cook it on the wok burner, because it probably wants a quite a high heat anyway. Okay, so we just heat that all up in there, in the pan. Uh, and whilst I'm doing that, that's the palm of ham to wrap around the tender stem of broccoli. I'm just going to start a little sauce, might as well just do that. Um, and the sauce that I'm going to be making, it's like a balsamic um, and beef stock with a bit of thyme, almost like reduction. Yeah, not a lot. It's not really like a sauce, it's just almost like a bit of a glaze, as you. Yeah, all done. Utilising the leftover beef stock. Put that all in, because it'll take a bit of time to reduce down anyway, thicken up into a really nice rich sauce. Okay. Utilise uh, my dried thyme, just give it a little whiz round like that. That's it. Turn on the gas. And what I do, I want some lemon in there. Just, yeah. You can tell when the oil's hot enough because it sort of like just rolls around, like it runs around, sorry. Um, and also a good way to test it is just put a little bit of that potato in actually. Not quite, I mean it, it's sort of like bubbling, but um, once that little bit, bit of potato starts like frying, then I know it's time to put those turkey uh, scallops in, okay? That's a good little test. Otherwise, if you put that into cold oil, you know, it's not going to crisp up and you might lose some of the couscous crumb on there. Okay, that's good. So that stock, that, uh, that jus, is just going to reduce down nicely. And it's very simple. You can actually put red wine in there as well, or red, uh, red wine, white wine, whatever you've got available. So that's totally fine. I think that's actually um, starting to bubble now. So I think I can put these in. hear it. Ah, not too bad. I'm just going to do one at a time because they're very big. Okay, keep it down. It's a wok burner, so just bear that in mind. Put it on the low heat. Don't put it on the high. <laughs> okay, that's totally fine. How long we got left on those? Oh, three minutes left on the um, fondant potatoes. Obviously the video won't go on for as long until they're totally done. Yeah. And I would say 
Two minutes each side on that. So by the time that buzzer goes off, I'll turn that. It's good time on that. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, decant this couscous so I can get rid of that flour now, get rid of that egg. Just decant the rest of this couscous in, in, in this Tupperware. do is just give that a little bit of a rinse, dry it up, and then um, I'll put that side on. Save me using up in my hand, doesn't it? There we go. You notice there was a big uh, cinnamon stick in there, so I won't use that. Just get the, get the spinach off though. Sauce is bubbling up nicely. How long we got left? One minute. Okay, that should be fine. Give it another 30 seconds, so I'll give it two and a half minutes and then before I turn it, just to be on the safe side. Normally it's two, but these are quite a big breaths, you know, so two and a half minutes should do it. You can smell like um, this sauce already. Just put the lid on and then turn that down. Check that. 30 seconds. Like a fish knife. Just check it. To be honest, it's another 30 seconds. But what I can do, I'm going to turn up to a medium heat just to give it a bit of brownness. It's always better to be safe than sorry, okay? You want to burn the couscous. So now I've turned it up to a medium heat, so I sizzle it up a little bit more, just that extra little bit of time. Okay, so I'm going to set the buzzer for another 15 minutes, so that would be 35 minutes in total for the fondant potatoes. Just going to check on these. That's totally fine. So what I'll do is just use the fish knife and then flip them over. These are quite big fondants here. That's it. Tiny bit more water in there. We don't want it evaporating all the water. That's it. So it's going to go for our, its second, its second phase. Okay, second phase. That's it. Very hot, it went. Okay. So let's give this a little flip. And as you can see, it's a nice like. Uh, can you see it? That brown, brown, brown bread crumb. And that's what I'm looking for, okay? Haven't lost much of that uh, couscous crumb at all. Turn that down to a low heat. And now I'm going to uh, turn on the saw onto the back burner, okay? Give that all this round. And now what I can do is so I'm just going to time that. So what's the time? So, okay, so two minutes. Two minutes, and then that one should be done. And then I'll do the, do the second as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna chop some chive. So I'm trying to make this uh, this sog switch up the flavour a little bit. By the time it's got some chive in there, and by the time it's got the mozzarella in the cabbage parcel, I think it will taste like uh, it won't really taste too much like uh, a chicken sog. It will taste a little, it will calm it down a little bit, you know, the mozzarella will me mellow it out, the, the chive will give it a little bit more onion sing, and then um, the cabbage will obviously neutralise everything a little bit. So it's going to be good. Just check that a little bit more. The thing. As long as you've got a fish knife, you can just pop it over, pop it up, and you can check, so you're really governed by when that is brown rather than actually the time. It depends on the, you know, how hot the oil is, what kind of oil you're using, you know, how long you're cooking it for, how thick the turkey breast is. So many elements to in terms of actually getting it cooked. I normally just go for when it's actually really nicely golden brown on the outside, then generally it's cooked on the outside, okay? 
just double check the position. Turn it up a little bit just to give it that final little crisp. The sog, a little stir, a little chives. So once this is done, and then I'll put the next one in there, then I'm going to pack out these uh, uh, cabbage parcels and then wrap the, wrap the tender stem broccoli in the palm ham. Okay, and that's the sauce bubbling away there nicely. Now what I'm going to do is just get a clean plate. Okay. That is one turkey of scallops. Okay. Not bad. It's a big, big boy, isn't it? Okay. Just leave that there. And what I'll do is just scrape out the rest of this. You don't really want that contaminating. I'm not going to use that flour for anything. But, yeah. It's only a little bit of oil, okay? I just don't want all those burnt, crisp, crisp uh, flakes in there, okay? So it's just starting again. A bit of rapeseed oil. Yeah, it's probably better to use fresh, fresh oil, you know? In there. Okay, that's good. So that sarg is like nicely heated through now. different, you know, like with uh, the chives in there, really makes it good. I might just give it a tiny little uh, squeeze of lemon, I just, I don't know why, I just think, just got, um, just feel like uh, trying it. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then a little bit of black pepper. So green peppercorns, black or green, doesn't really matter which one you use. You can even use white or pink, it's up to you. Okay, so let's move it on. Just going to test that again with a little bit of potato. Yeah, that's good. That sizzled up straight away. So I know that pan is ready to cook this scallop. Make sure it's even so the oil's not running to the edges. Again, after hand handed any meat. Okay, so now I can move on to this. So just put that to one side now. Okay, so now it's getting a bit hot in here. So now what I've got is some semi dried uh, tomatoes. Just give that a nice round. So that's 44, leave it on for 45, 46 minutes, so I'll check it off in one minute anyway. That will stir. So now what we do, just going to get um, like a little, little dish, like this. Okay, turn off the sog. Give that sauce a little stir. So I put the I put the lid on just to trap all those all the flavours, okay? And then I take the lid off, and that will just reduce the reduce the sauce down, yeah. Reduce the liquid to really make it like a reduction. So that's forty-five. Just check that. So D46 on there. So whilst I'm doing this, whilst that's doing that, sorry, what I do is um, just get the spinach parcel leaf like so. 
and just scoop a bit of that sarg inside, okay? Feel like I'm in Mauritius. Okay, put the mozzarella here. Just a little bit of that. Just cut the mozzarella. Just that same six minutes. This is quite a particularly big boy, so um, just give it a little bit down. I might need to another two and a half minutes, so do that eight and a half on that one. Okay, so back to this. So you've got the sarg there, give it a little push down that mozzarella in there. And then what I do, just use my hands. Little uh, nice uh, semi-dried tomatoes. They're not cool. They're like in between sun blush and uh, sun dried. Quite like them, they're semi dried. So it's all good. And just like a scatter a few of them around. So I'm putting, say, uh, six of these in. So as you can see, that's looking quite nice. Yeah? And then what I'll do, I'm just going to do two of them now for demonstration purposes. So that's one more minute in there. Try not to get distracted before you don't want to burn the, burn the, the snitch off, okay? Just wash my hands a little bit. That's good. So, turn that to medium heat just for the final 30 seconds. So what I'm going to be doing is another one of these quickly if I've got time. Scoop that sarg mix in there. got four of these to do, so, you know, that's fine. Push the mozzarella in again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Job done. So that's two. Just nice in there, compact, like so. And then that will go in the oven in a minute. Well, in a bit, not right straight away. I'm going to turn that off. got a feeling that's done. Do, but actually, I was wrong. Medium heat, so another 30 seconds on that. Yeah, it's a bit of a bigger press this, so I want to give it a, you know, I don't want to scrimp from that. Yeah. Make sure it's cooked all the way through, okay? Might have to give this one three minutes, because it's quite a big one. Just check the sauce. Okay, it's stir down. And what I do is turn up the sauce, the gas on the sauce. Really bubble it up and reduce it. Okay, fondant potatoes are doing okay. But they always take a bit of time. Fondant potatoes might take 45 minutes, you know, depending on how thick you do them. If you do them like little, then half an hour. But my ones are quite, you know, an inch thick, so it might take 45 to even 50, 50 minutes, depends. You know, I put them in the small oven, which isn't as powerful as the, the main oven, so it depends again on your appliance that you're using, yeah? So you always have to gauge by the way things look and feel, yeah? That's it, that's good. Turn off the gas. And what I'll do is a little tummy tip, just put a little bit of um, kitchen roll on there and as you can see it will soak up any extra um, grease, yeah? So that's totally fine and there's a the second one. Retains the heat a little bit. Can you see that? Yeah, that because that lid is already really nice and warm from when I was uh, putting it.
it on the jus, yeah? The, the sauce. Okay. So that sauce is going to take a little bit of time to reduce down. So whilst um, they're not going in the oven yet, just going to quickly do this, and this will be the last thing I do on the video. <laughs> it's quite a long video, this, but you know, um, these processes always take a bit of time when, when you're talking as well. If I'm not talking, you can obviously just knuckle down and just steamroll it, yeah? Do it much faster. But I'm having to, to think about how to explain it to you guys without rushing it so it's not complicated, okay? And then just roughly what I do, I haven't got much parma ham, so I'll probably have some tender stem broccoli left over, which is fine, some plain and some with parma ham. Okay, so just kind of like, as you're rolling it, like sort of twist it round, yeah, overlap it, yeah? Almost like a stick of rock, yeah, and it's got that spiral effect. Yeah, and that's it. This is parma ham. So I'll just put that, um, in fact, I'll just put them, lay them on there, it's totally fine. Luckily, it's only me and my wife eating <laughs> all this effort for two people, plus you guys, of course. Yeah. So doesn't matter. Even if we get one stem uh, palm ham, tender stem broccoli each, it's worth it, isn't it? I think it will look nice for the presentation. Just a little bit of saltiness on the on the on the meat as well. There, you know, natural salt in there. Yeah, it's totally fine. I don't add any extra salt, by the way. Obviously, most. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that already, but if this is the first one, then I'm not adding any extra salt to my food. My wife's got high blood pressure, so that's, that's the reason. But also, it's probably, you, you can get like uh, lots of uh, salt is added to foods like uh, parma ham, pecorino, anyway, yeah? So why would you need to add loads of extra salt? You don't need to do it. Okay. Totally fine, I'm going to check that in a minute. Sauce is reducing down nicely. Give it a little stir, mix them up. Once it's reduced down a bit more, then I'll add a tiny bit of corn flour, not a lot. I'm, I'll show you in a minute. And then that'll be the last thing. There we go, we managed to get two, two each, one big, one small. Okay, so what I did, wash my hands again. So there's the corn flour. Okay, quickly do this for you guys. Put a little bit of corn flour in the cup. Not even that. Just a little teaspoon in that and goes there. Put some cold, a splash of cold water in it. Not a lot. So obviously I'm trying to reduce the, the thickness of the sauce. And then it just goes to like a smooth, like uh, almost like this, like milk, yeah? And then you bung that in. Yeah? It just stops it from clumping, that's all. When, uh, yeah? And look, you can see it's sort of like it changes a little bit of colour. It makes it like slightly lighter. And then I'm just going to turn that up. And that will reduce down nicely into like a thick sauce. Thick sauce. Just going to check these uh, fondant potatoes quickly. Yep, they're soft. They just need to get a little bit of colour. Just going to ramp that up the oven to 240 just for five minutes. Okay, so the gas burner there. I'm going to cook the parma ham and um, tender stem broccoli in the pan there. So just turn that up. Just utilising the leftover um, rapeseed oil and sesame seed oil, which is totally fine. Just going to get, these won't take long, they're all just going to crisp up the parma ham. And whilst I'm doing that, these are just going in the oven for, you know, five minutes. Also, um, just to melt the mozzarella and just warm it all up. Again, they're pre-cooked, so that's totally fine. So that's it. Let's check the 
sauce. There we go, the sauce is fine. What I'll do, I'll just strain that because it's got you know, big, big clumps of uh, thyme in there. So I'm just going to strain that into, see if I've got something that I can strain it onto. I'll just have to strain it into, perhaps I can strain it into this. So I'm going to utilise that tomorrow. Okay. Strain the sauce into that. There we go. Just give it a little um, smooth, smooth down with the spoon, make sure you get all the juices out. And that's all that's left over that time. That's almost like a juicy. So now I've just got like a really nice um, sort of like rich, shiny sauce. So I'm just gonna okay, heat that a little bit through. Once it's painted up. 